Having learned about the various types of certification actions, it's time to gain an understanding of how POST evaluates cases of alleged serious misconduct. From what I saw, the POST website outlined the investigative process, but I wanted to start by hearing from our officers whether they had found good information on this online. So, Kyle, you mentioned that when you heard about it, you went to, you got online to try to learn more about it. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I didn't know that I saw in there was that you can, you have the 30-day period where if you are the officer that's losing your certification, you can appeal it. And then I didn't realize what the appeals process was, that, it, that it's civilians, mostly a civilian board, some officers. And then as you go along, there may be like a, a judge that looks at it. Those were my main questions when I was done looking at the website was, where's the panel come from? Who's this judge? Is it an actual judge? Or Do you guys have like an investigative team? Say so you're not yeah. happy with, the, with what the agency gave you? There's this whole new branch of post, the Peace Officer Standards Accountability Division. And those are our investigators. And, and these are experienced investigators. One of the real strengths of post is that we're able, able to leverage experience from all over the state. The average experience of our investigators is about 26 years. I think you can have a high degree of confidence that the folks who are looking at the cases that come before them both have the experience to understand what they're looking at. And, and the whole review process really sets up a circumstance where I'm confident that it doesn't make it through that process really if there's any doubt about whether or not serious misconduct has occurred. So can you give an overview of the process? Because I think there were some questions about what that looks like. Yeah. So if we take a case that uh, perhaps the agency sustained, so at that point, I will take the case before an internal peer review. And this is made up of bureau chiefs from the unit as well as bureau chiefs outside of the unit, a representative from our legal. And we'll discuss the case and we'll talk a little bit about what are some of the questions that we might have. It then goes through a whole internal review process within post, including up to our executive team. And only then is a determination made about whether or not we're gonna recommend decertification. If decertification is recommended at that point, that's when that letter would go out and notify the involved officer that our intent would be to decertify unless the officer uh, files an appeal. The process appears to have the right people in place for reviewing the cases, as well as the checks, balances, and redundancy you would expect. I dug a little deeper into the process with someone else from POST who's dealing with these cases on a daily basis. So can you describe the, the levels of review with which POST evaluates these cases? When intake, our intake bureau receives the report from the agency, I do an initial review of the case to determine if it meets serious misconduct. If it does, I assign it to a consultant the consultant then works the case. If they've gotten to the point where they believe that it meets serious misconduct and we want to move that case forward to decertification, we've had numerous discussions throughout that time about the case. When we get to that point, there is a bureau chief peer review. And that panel is comprised of the other three bureau chiefs within professional conduct and an outside bureau chief within post to then hear that case, hear all the facts and the evidence. If that panel believes that the case does have merit to move forward for decertification, it then goes to the executive level review and legal review. If it passes the executive level and legal review, then at that point, it's scheduled for the board and the officer that is then noticed. I want the field to know, I want them to know that we take these cases very seriously. It's not paper pushing and a quick process. We want to make sure that we're looking at these cases thoroughly, fairly, looking at all the evidence, looking at all of that is there. And unfortunately, that may take a little bit longer than what would be expected. I think it's our responsibility to do that for each and every case that we get. Waiting for a fair and correct decision based on a thorough review, as difficult as that might be, is certainly preferable to a quick resolution that comes to the wrong conclusion. Now that we had learned some about the process, I wondered what our officers would want to hear more about. So what questions do you have based on uh, Andrew's overview of the process? So if a complaint comes up and for whatever right, the department has to send it up and it doesn't meet that criteria, 
nine steps or whatever is in serious misconduct. If it doesn't meet any of that, then it just, hey, we're not even going to touch this because it doesn't fit in there. So it, it could not move forward for a couple of different reasons. One, it could not move forward because it simply doesn't meet the definition of serious misconduct. That's not the same as maybe an act of serious misconduct where the agency is able to sustain the allegation at their level, at the preponderance level, and we don't have clear and convincing evidence that the underlying acts actually occurred. And there, there's a distinction there between what the agency has to prove in their case and what Post has to prove in our case. And our burden is substantially higher. Post standard for sustaining an allegation is higher than the agency's? I needed more specifics. So I have a couple of questions for you. Um, first off, you mentioned the agency's burden of proof. Uh, is that different from the burden of proof for your investigative unit? It is, and it's a really important distinction. The standard for our division and for the board and for the commission is what's called clear and convincing evidence. It really means there's a high probability that the underlying acts uh, do qualify as serious misconduct and are therefore actionable, either for decertification or suspension. I wanted to hear another perspective on this. I spoke with someone who has dealt with investigations at the agency level. Can there be a discrepancy between the IA and Post's investigation because they're looking at different criteria? Yes, absolutely. So the threshold for an agency's investigation is preponderance of the evidence, roughly 51% or greater. Whereas with Post, their threshold is going to be clear and convincing. So it's, it's greater than, it's going to be more difficult for Post to sustain because they're looking at it through the, the lens and the threshold of clear and convincing versus preponderance of the evidence. We've shed light on Post's investigative approach to reviewing cases that are brought before it. Next, we'll explore what happens after an officer appeals a decertification recommendation and who the people are reviewing the cases at that point. For additional information and resources related to certification and decertification, and to view a step-by-step -step workflow of the decertification process, access the POST website at the link below.